Good morning. It's Tuesday, October 19th. I'm Suzanne Watley, and you're listening to the LA Report from KPCC and LAist.com. Here's your morning news. The Port of Los Angeles is expected to start operating around the clock seven days a week to alleviate a backup of cargo ships. The aim is to get goods offloaded faster, and truck drivers hope it'll make for a better schedule for them. Josue Alvarez has worked as a port truck driver for five years. He regularly waits hours to pick up goods or to return an empty container. There's been times that I've gone to the port and I've been kicked out because uh, the port's going close, so I didn't get paid for that load. I just got paid for the hour that was there. Many truck drivers in California are considered independent contractors. Alvarez says that his current company starts paying him after he's waited for one hour, but some don't compensate drivers for any of that time. The trucking company XPO Logistics recently settled a class action lawsuit with 800 port truck drivers for $30 million. The drivers claimed XPO deprived them of their wages by misclassifying them as independent contractors. Southern California representatives from the House Natural Resources Committee held a congressional hearing in Irvine yesterday focused on the Orange County oil spill. Witnesses spoke about the impact on the local economy. Scott Brenneman runs a commercial fishing operation and two seafood restaurants in Newport Beach. It's just been, to tell you the truth, a very difficult couple weeks and I'm not sure how long this is going to last. I'm not sure how the public's going to respond to it long term if they're still going to have some fear that the fish is contaminated. Other businesses from surf shops to whale watching companies have also reported negative effects on their businesses. For example, the cancellation of the last day of the Pacific Air Show hurt nearby hotels, stores, and restaurants. Congress member Katie Porter co-chaired the hearing and promised a full, fair, and complete investigation into the oil leak. Her colleague Alan Lowenthal called for an end to oil drilling as part of a $3.5 trillion spending bill that's currently being debated in Congress. The Dodgers are back at home tomorrow and heading into Game 3 of the National League Championship Series with two losses against the Atlanta Braves. Fans we heard from don't seem too worried about it. Vrenny Palacios is a native Angelino and lifelong Dodger fan and doesn't own a television. She catches Dodger games at her local bar where she connects with the community and sometimes trash talks opposing fans. And that two-game deficit? Well, the Dodgers overcame something similar against the Braves in 2020. I feel like this kind of happens like every October, right? It's like the nature of being a Dodgers fan. Another LA native and lifelong Dodger fan, Alvin Carrillo, agrees. Obviously, the Turners need to step up a little bit, but I'm not too stressed about that. Like, we have our downsides with that. So do the Braves. Obviously, I think the Cooney is out for the rest of the year. He's talking about Justin Turner and Trey Turner with the Dodgers and the Braves, Ronald Acuna Jr. But according to Carrillo, the worst part about being down against the Braves is listening to TBS commentators hate on the Dodgers. Game time tonight at Dodger Stadium. Coronavirus booster shots for people who got the Moderna and the Johnson & Johnson vaccines may be approved by the end of this week. The Centers for Disease Control will meet Thursday and Friday to talk about formally giving the okay for a third dose. The Pfizer vaccine is already approved for boosters. Dr. Peter Chin Hong specializes in infectious diseases at UC San Francisco Medical Center and says the CDC's advisors have already given their approval, so both vaccines are likely to go through. The only question is whether or not people would mix and match. I think personally that it's fine to mix and match. And it seems the data at least and with antibody response seems very compelling with J&J followed by Moderna and Pfizer. Dr. Chin Hong is a regular guest on Air Talk with Larry Mantle. Encouraging pandemic numbers yesterday from Orange County. The county's health care agency says the number of COVID patients in hospitals is down to 175, a drop from 210 on Friday, and a number the county hasn't seen since late July. In Riverside County, the number of COVID patients in hospitals is also down, but not as much as in OC. The Friday count was 278. As of Monday, Riverside University Health System said it was down to 271. In LA County, state numbers show 726 COVID patients in hospitals. Thank you for listening to the LA Report. I'm Suzanne Watley. Join us again next time. Meantime, you can read more news at laist.com and of course, listen live at kpcc.org.